Hey everyone, I'm Tatiana, and today I want to talk with you about why it's so difficult to make the changes that we want to make in our lives. Why it's so difficult to achieve the goals that we set for ourselves, to build the business that we've been wanting to build for so many years, or to lose the weight that we've been trying to lose for so long. Why is it so difficult? Why does it have to be such a challenge? And I, I know this can be very frustrating because we make one step forward in progress with our good intentions, but then we notice we make two steps backwards and we have nobody else to blame but ourselves. And it's very frustrating because we go to war with ourselves. We fight with ourselves between what we want to do, what our intentions are versus what we actually do, the actions that we take. And it's frustrating because we don't understand why we are self-sabotaging. We don't understand why we're making it harder on ourselves to achieve the things that we want to achieve in life. We want to make progress. We want to grow. We want to become more. But it just doesn't seem to happen. It becomes so challenging that we oftentimes give up. So what I'm going to share with you is not conventional by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, I think it's very important. And I think it will strike a chord with you because when the truth is spoken, the soul relates, the soul understands it, even if the mind doesn't. So I could um, you know, share with you a lot of surface level stuff about why it's so hard to make the changes that we wanna make in our lives, but I wanted to go deeper with this and kind of get to the root uh, source of it all. So in order to get started, uh, we need to talk about ego. Now, you know, most of us have a very surface level understanding about ego. We think ego is just, you know, someone being inflated or egotistical or absorbed with themselves. Uh, we'll label certain people when we, when we, we notice that. But ego is, there's far more to ego than that. It is extremely, uh, there's so much depth to it. And everyone has ego. It's not something that's turned on and turned off, for most of us at least. Everyone has ego, except maybe a very small percentage of the population, like Buddhist monks or Zen masters, or people who are actively uh, dissolving their egos. Uh, but for most of us, we all have ego. And what ego is, is whatever you identify with. It's the I that you think you are. It's the identity of whatever you identify with, your emotions, your beliefs, your thoughts, whatever you think your reality is. It's whatever you hold as an identity. That is part of your ego. And the ego is developed from you know, the day that you're born until now. Every life experience that you have uh, helps to uh, build on your ego. And you know, ego creates separation because when you have an identity, you know what you are and you know what you are not. I am this, I am not that. I am Tatiana, I, I'm not the table, I'm not that person, I'm not the flower, I'm not black, I'm not blonde, I'm not this, I'm not that. I know what I am and I know what I'm not. So it creates separation. And you know, ego is, is Part of ego creation is actually part of the survival mind. The reason we have ego, a lot of it is part of survival. And um, because it helps you to survive when you are able to identify with that. There is a survival mechanism built in. But you have to also understand that your mind is two million years old. And your mind doesn't care about what makes you happy or joyful or have fun and achieve success in your life. It doesn't care about any of that. All it cares about is survival. And so ego is a part of that mechanism. Ego really cares about self-preservation. And this is what we need to understand, is that when we have an identity, ego wants to preserve that identity. So there's kind of a hemostasis mechanism built into ego. Where, for example, you know, if you know biology, you know that the human body, if you're healthy, likes to maintain a temperature of about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you get really hot, then your body's going to try and regulate that to cool you down, right? 
or if you get really cold, then your blood is going to be flowing away from the extremities and going to be flowing where it is needed most, those important organs uh, to protect them. And it's going to try and maintain, uh, to increase the warmth in the body. So it's trying to maintain hemostasis. And it's no different than thermostat in your house, right? If you set it to a particular temperature, then if it goes lower than that, then, or if it goes higher than that, then it's going to turn on the AC. So it's going to try and maintain the temperature that you set it. So ego is the same thing. So whatever you're identifying with, it wants to hold on to that identity. So it's very important to understand that because what happens when you challenge that identity? What happens when you want to create some changes in your life? Anything that is going to challenge that ego, to challenge that identity is threatening because it could lead to the destruction of the ego. It could lead to the destruction of that identity that you've been holding on to for so many years. Okay, and ego, so ego doesn't like that. Ego doesn't like challenge. Um, it wants to maintain what is. So let's just do an example here. I learn by examples. If for, you know, your whole life you've been overweight um, and maybe, you know, it started at a young age because maybe you were bullied in school or you didn't have a, a good home life um, and you turned to food for comfort and certainty. And so food um, and eating has been a, a huge part of your life. It's been a part of your identity. Being overweight has been a part of your identity for 10, 20 years, 30 years. So now when you're trying to go on a diet, what are you trying to do? Well, you've got to change your behavior. You've got to change what you've been doing. You've got to take a new approach. And those changes are threatening that previous identity. Because ultimately, when you go on a diet, what are you trying to do? You're trying to lose weight. You're trying to become thinner, right? So you are trying to become something else. You are trying to... Uh, dissolve that previous identity to grow into something new and ego doesn't like that so then what happens when you go on a diet you start you know maybe the first few days you're doing good first week first two weeks you're doing good you've got motivation you've got tools and resources you've set yourself up for success but then ego starts to creep in because ego all of a sudden is feeling threatened and ego doesn't like that and ego starts to say well we got to make sure that she doesn't change. We got to make sure that she's not going to, uh, you know, change forever. So then all of a sudden you have this like hunger craving or this temptation. You go, you know, wake up at 12 in the morning or, or go downstairs to the freezer and get a, a bowl of ice cream. Uh, you have this strong desire to, to break the diet or all of a sudden you start feeling very emotional and that those emotions trigger um, eating for comfort, to help comfort you during the time of distress. Uh, so all of a sudden it kind of takes over you. It takes over your body, uh, your, your feelings, your emotions, and it kind of, you get, go into a trance and ego has now taken the reins. Ego has taken over because it did not like the direction that you were heading because where you were heading, you would have been dissolving that previous identity of being overweight and it doesn't like that. So it doesn't like when you make significant changes in your life. I'm not talking about like dyeing your hair. That doesn't matter. I'm talking about things that will affect you on an existential level. Uh, so real things like, you know, building your business is an example for you guys because, you know, if you've been at a job for the last 10, 20 years, been working a nine to five, and that's who you are, that's who you've been, that's the life that you've been living, uh, then to build your own business and to become an entrepreneur is, is, it's a huge shift and it changes your identity. It changes a part of the identity that you once were. And so the ego can start to pop up. And so the key is to bring awareness to that is to see that, hey, is this of my higher self or is this of my ego? So you might start to uh, experience, um, you know, maybe like doubt. You know, you start to doubt things. You start to become very skeptical. You start to over-evaluate things. And, and that's a hindrance. That's the ego showing up, trying to insert that doubt 
so that you don't make the changes that you are on track to make. So I hope this makes sense for you. I'm going to give you an example. When I was at my BioCyberNot training in Arizona, where I did neurofeedback training, it's a very intense process. You spend 14 hours a day um, training your brain. And you know ultimately, it's all leading to you raising your consciousness. And so on day two, I think I was sitting in the chamber, it's pitch black, and uh, all of a sudden I had this like extreme pain in my back. It was on my left side and it was between my shoulder blade and it wasn't just like a muscle pain or a tightness, it was like a sharp pain. And it was so uncomfortable that I was very distracted. I was no longer able to be internal and focus on the internal world. I was so distracted with the external environment, my back. So throughout the entire session, I wasn't really able to make any progress because I was so focused on this pain in my back. And uh, by the time the session ended, I got up off the chair and, and I did stretches and everything on the chair and it didn't seem to go away. Uh, but after the session, I got up off the chair and as soon as I got up, the pain was gone in a, in a second, in a split second. And I noticed it because I was, I had, I had a guess that it might've been my ego and I wasn't sure. And as soon as I got up with the chair and the pain disappeared, I knew it was my ego. And so the ego manifested physically in my body as a way to distract me from doing the inner work that I was doing because the work that I was doing was leading me to dissolving a part of my identity and raising my level of consciousness. So that's just an example of, of how the ego can step in and can start to take control when it feels threatened because ultimately the ego wants control. That's what it wants. It loves control. And so in BioCybernaut, they talk about the five hindrances. they are worry, doubt, drowsiness, distractibility and aversion. If you notice these things, these things may be of your ego. And so the key again is awareness. Awareness precedes all change. And so that's why I'm bringing this video to you. Not because there's a certain tool I'm gonna to give you. The only tool I can give you is just to have awareness about this. So if you notice these things showing up when you're trying to make progress in your life, when you're trying to do, make changes, just notice, is this of my higher self? Or is this of my ego trying to preserve what is? Trying to preserve the identity that I have created or that I've held on to. So a word that we can use to help describe this experience where when we are making existential changes in our life that are propelling us forward that would require us to dissolve a part of our identity, we would call this ego backlash. So if you're making progress, you're moving forward, and then the ego wants to pull you back. So ego backlash would be a good term for that. To give you an analogy about how the ego works, the ego can be sitting in the driver's seat of the carriage, okay? And the ego wants to go, it wants to go full throttle, yippee yay yay going with the horses, let's gallop, and it wants to go fast, it loves to be in control, and it's having a blast. The ego just loves the thrill of that. Okay, but it doesn't see the ending of the bridge, okay, where the bridge is cut off and if it were to continue, it would fall to its death. It doesn't notice that. All it notices is this is fun, let's keep going on. I like to be in control. It loves instant gratification. It loves pleasure. It's more short-term thinking. Um, so what your role is, is that your higher self needs to be sitting in that passenger seat. And your higher self needs to be aware and needs to look ahead and say, oh, this is of the ego. The ego right now is in control and it's leading me down to my death. So I need to take the reins of this carriage and I need to turn this carriage around and go uphill. And I will do that. It takes, it takes self-control to do that. But I also have to anticipate that the entire time that I'm doing that, the ego is going to be upset. It's going to be frustrated. It's going to be a little crybaby because it didn't get its way and it lost control.
So that's how the ego works, okay? And unfortunately, for most of us who aren't dedicating our lives to um, raising our consciousness and dissolving the ego, the ego is always gonna be part of us. It's always gonna be there, and that's okay. Again, the ego has a purpose. It's not like it's the villain here, but it's just understanding the ego doesn't necessarily care for what's in your best interest. The ego just wants to preserve an identity that was once created. Okay, and so you have to be able to have the awareness of what is your higher self. So the ego can be a wonderful member of the committee, but it cannot be the chairman of the board. That's where I want to leave you guys um, with this video. So just want you guys to, to hear this and just to get a new understanding about what ego is and just see how ego shows up in your life. Um, you know, one last just example for you, I'll give you. Um, when I was at BioCybernaut doing this neurofeedback training, a huge process of this is, is going into a high alpha brainwave state. And from that brainwave state, practice a process of forgiveness. So it's a 14 step process because we all have stuff to forgive. We have people to forgive. And most often we have the most uh, forgiveness to do on ourselves. Uh, we have a lot that we need to give our, for, forgive ourselves for. And so the, the idea is that once you can work through all this forgiveness, all this stuff that's been stacking up throughout your life that you think was okay, that you think that you dealt with, you think you let go, but really there's still a charge there. If you can deal with that, you can clean up your house and now you're free, you're liberated. Now you're actually able to, to be your true self and to raise your consciousness because uh, you're not chained down by all of that stuff. Um, so I was going through this process and I had um, you know, someone to forgive and I'm usually you know, pretty good at forgiving because I understand the power of forgiveness and ultimately forgiveness is for us. You know, it's not for the other person, it's to liberate us from the burden of resentment. Um, but as I was going through this, I noticed how like I just didn't want to fully forgive. Like I would forgive logically. I'm like, yeah, I forgive you. And I would say it, but emotionally there was still a charge because I wanted to like punish the person. I wanted the person to feel the pain that I was feeling for betraying me, for hurting me so much. But I was able to have the awareness that that was all the ego that no matter how painful it felt, no matter how much I was in the right to feel that pain, it didn't matter. Because ultimately, what's it all for? Why, why do I have to suffer? Why do I have to feel pain? Why do I have to transfer that pain to someone else and punish them? That's all the ego. So I was able to separate my higher self from the ego and having met a perspective and see that and see how my, my ego was trying to inflict this suffering on me and them to hold on to something of the past. And so I was able to just let it all go and just forgive and truly forgive to the point where there was no charge. I could think of that experience that was so painful for me and not have a charge, not have a tear roll down my face um, because that's what true forgiveness is. So that's just an example of how powerful it is to have awareness because once you have awareness, you can't go back. Once you have awareness, you, you now you've seen the truth, not just how things appear to you, but how things really are. Because when we're stuck down here, uh, for us, we're only seeing things how they appear from our perspective. But oftentimes you know that you know, there's, there's many different perspectives. What about that person's perspective or that person's perspective? Is there a way where I can see things from everyone's perspective? Maybe, but at least I can try and step outside of myself. And uh, you can do that through awareness. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope this helps you because, because the reason I make this is because I know you guys are, are building your businesses wanting to, um, but there's a lot of self-sabotage and you, you know, years go by where you're not making progress and you know, you can, yeah, you're busy. Yeah. You've got, uh, maybe you don't have the money to do it. You have, we have all of these things. These are all external reasons, uh, that excuses that may be true, but they're all part of the ego of why we're not able to make the success that we want to make or, or make the changes we want to make or do whatever it is that we want to do. 
But deep down, we have the power to create what we want to create, as, as long as we can get outside of our, get out of our own way. Um, and so just bringing awareness to that. So if you have any questions, comment down below for me. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. It definitely does help uh, to have my video reach more people. Um, if you know someone who could benefit from this, please do share it with them. Um, and if you're interested in, in learning more about that experience I mentioned, uh, alluded to about BioCybernaut, I have a video about that on the YouTube channel as well. I'll link it down below in the description box below. Um, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.